welcome to another session of nuclear chemistry today we'll understand the principle and working of light water nuclear reactor before we move on subscribe for more such informative videos and drop in your comments after watching the video let us understand the principle of nuclear fission reaction that is when a slow moving neutron bombards with a heavy nucleus it splits into two smaller nuclei of almost equal masses and releases neutrons and tremendous amount of energy that is we can understand with the reaction when a slow moving neutron bombards with a heavy nuclear such as uranium 235 it splits to give two smaller nuclei like barium krypton or xenon strontium cesium rubidium etc but in each of the nuclear fission reactions we'll have two or three neutrons produced and along with a tremendous amount of heat energy is generated the actual nuclear fission reaction is an uncontrolled chain reaction that is when a neutron bombards with a uranium heavy nucleus it produces three neutrons and each of these three neutrons bombards with three more uranium nucleus to produce three each three neutrons each so that it reacts with nine neutron uh, nine uranium nucleus and this way 9 will become 27 and so on the chain reaction never ending and it happens in a fraction of second and it leads to explosion this is what is happening in a nuclear bomb but we can't control this chain reaction how are we controlling is we allow only one neutron to react at a time with the uranium nucleus and other excess neutrons are absorbed that is controlled chain reaction is taking place in a nuclear reactor so that we can constructively produce electricity in a nuclear reactor that is when a slow moving neutron bombards with uranium it produces many neutrons but excess neutrons are absorbed and we allow only one neutron to bombard again with a fresh uranium nucleus these are the split up smaller nuclei this way we control the reaction and we see that in three steps only three uranium nuclei are bombarded but in this uncontrolled chain reaction in three steps we have nine plus three plus four nearly 13 neutrons are reacting 13 uranium nuclei are reacting now let us look into the outline of light water nuclear reactor we have a reactor core which is the heart of the reactor which comprises of fuel rods control rods coolant and moderator fuel rods are mainly we use enriched uranium that is uranium 235 which is made in the form of rods and placed inside the nuclear reactor in such a manner that it is distributed throughout so that the heat generator is also uniform throughout and it's not concentrated at any one point so that it leads to explosion to prevent that we are placing the fuel rods uniformly inside the reactor core although in this diagram for the sake of comfort we are showing all the fuel rods placed at the bottom next comes the moderator i have been shown in this diagram because in the light water nuclear reactor the light water that is h2o itself acts as a moderator the function of the moderator is to reduce the speed of the neutron actually the neutron is a fast moving neutron the moderator hits or collides with the fast moving neutron and reduces its speed and it converts it to a slow moving neutron that slow moving neutron only bombards with the uranium u235 nucleus so that is the function of moderator the coolant what the coolant does is during the nuclear fission reaction huge amount of heat energy is generated and this heat is absorbed by the coolant and we'll see the job of the coolant little later next comes the control rods what this control rods do is we already said that we, we are going to control the nuclear fission reaction in the nuclear reactor so we will have the control rods hanging at the top only the required number of control rods will be lowered so we can lower or raise this control rods depending on the requirement these control rods are lowered between the fuel rods so that it can absorb the excess neutrons produced during the nuclear fission reaction and allow only one neutron to bombard with the fresh nucleus of uranium each time 
but in case of emergency we need to shut down the complete reaction we lower all the control rods and shut down the complete reaction that is why we need to have plenty of control rods in stock so all this control rod moderator coolant and the fuel rods put together we call it as a reactor core but all these are enclosed in a pressure vessel that is due to the tremendous amount of heat energy which is produced inside lot of pressure is developed of about even 200 atmospheres and we need to choose a material which can withstand that pressure that is we use stainless steel pressure vessel it has two openings inlet and outlet of coolant and few openings at the top where we are hanging the control rods which can be lowered or raised depending on the requirement next comes the reflector i am not showing the reflector because the one which is used as a moderator itself can be used as a reflector in light water nuclear reactor that water itself acts as a reflector that is some neutrons which are formed during the nuclear fission reactions may escape out of the nuclear reactor core and this has to be reflected back into the reactor core this is done by the light water itself so that reflector also i am not showing as a separate component and last comes the shielding that is we know that tremendous amount of heat energy is produced as well as harmful radiations are produced during the nuclear fission reaction so the excess heat which is generated is absorbed using a stainless steel sheet which is enclosing the pressure vessel which absorbs the excess heat which we call it as a thermal shielding and next comes the biological shielding which is made of the uh, out of concrete wall which is made of special type of bricks like refractories which absorbs the harmful radiations and prevents the people working around the coolant carries the heat which is generated inside the reactor core and takes it to the heat exchanger the heat exchanger already has liquid water at ambient temperature so this heat is transferred to the water present inside the heat exchanger and this water gets converted to high pressure steam and this coolant after transferring is the heat it returns back to the reactor core so we are reusing it again and again but the steam which is generated it is used to rotate the blades of the turbines which is coupled with a generator once this blades of the turbines are rotated the generator generates electricity but we are not wasting the steam this is again condensed back using a condenser and this liquid water is returned back to the heat exchanger this is also cyclic this is the working of light water nuclear reactor we'll just summarize the reactor core contains a fuel rods moderator coolant and control rods and uranium 235 which is the fissionable fuel is normally made in the form of rods in case we use the moderator we mix both the moderator and the fuel rods to make these rods a fuel to make these rods and it is distributed inside the reactor core such that the heat which is produced inside is uniform and next comes the moderator we can use beryllium graphite heavy water or light water but in light water nuclear reactor light water itself acts as the moderator and already we said it slows down the speed of the fast moving neutron and it makes it a slow moving neutron so that it bombards with the uranium nucleus next is the coolant it removes the heat generated in the reactor and takes it up to the heat exchanger and transfers the heat to the water present in the heat exchanger the light water heavy water liquid metals that is molten metals such as sodium potassium also can be used as a coolant or organic coolants can be used but in light water nuclear reactant water itself acts as a coolant so the water here functions as a coolant moderator as well as the reflector the control rods can be lowered or raised as we discussed when they are inserted between the fuel rods they absorb absorb the excess neutrons how it is absorbing is the boron or cadmium is used as a control rod it reacts with the neutron to form lithium and helium this way it takes up the neutrons but it can also take up the neutron to form boron 11 and emit gamma radiations the similarly cadmium also will act as a control rod so it is acting to its function is to start up the reactor at normal operating temperature maintain the reaction steady and shut down the reaction in case of emergency 
and next comes the reflector heavy water or light water can be used but in this case light water is used it reflects back the escaping neutrons back to the reactor core and pressure vessel it encloses all this reactor core the components present in the reactor core which is made of stainless steel and it can withstand the pressure up to 200 atmospheres and it has two openings for the inlet and outlet of the coolant and openings at the top to lower or raise the control rods shielding thermal shielding made of stainless steel it absorbs the excess heat produced and the biological shielding is a concrete wall it actually prevents the harmful gamma radiation to go out of the reactor core and protects the people working near the vicinity and heat exchanger the coolant which carries the heat from the reactor core transfers to the water present in the heat exchanger and this water is converted to high pressure steam of about even 400 atmosphere and this high pressure steam is used to rotate the blades of the turbine which is coupled with the generator and the generator generates electricity and this high pressure steam is then condensed using a condenser and the water is returned back to the heat exchanger this is how a nuclear reactor works and the advantages of nuclear energy does not produce greenhouse gases because we don't have any carbon content so if you have carbon content it will undergo combustion to form carbon dioxide and it will increase the global warming this is not possible in nuclear energy and highly reliable that is we can get uninterrupted nuclear energy for more than even two years nearly one to two years what we understand by this is if i start up the reaction without any interruption even for two years it can run non-stop for 24 into 7 less production cost the installation cost is heavy but how i should compare is the energy that can be produced the amount of energy produced using one kg of uranium is almost equal to the energy produced from one ton of coal this is how we need to compare the production costs that way over a long run the production cost is very less and we have a lot of drawbacks that is it requires special care as we care with the hazardous material during mining that is while extracting uranium transportation of uranium and storage of uranium and disposal of spent fuel that is after using that uranium how i dispose it the byproducts which are formed during the reaction is also radioactive in nature so all this will require special care i need to uh, pack all this material in a very very thick uh, stainless steel container and we need to dig it as a landfill in depth of earth or in uh, deep of the ocean we call these as uh, nuclear energy repositories okay so excess heat discharge to water bodies that is the heat exchanger periodically the water present in it will be changed then we discharge that hot water into the water bodies when we discharge even a two degree raise in the temperature of the water bodies present will affect the aquatic species the metabolic activity of the aquatic species increases this way when the metabolism increases it absorbs or takes up more dissolved oxygen and the dissolved oxygen content present in the water drastically comes down so this we call it as thermal pollution and we require several safety designs that is ne nearly four to five level safety is required to prevent the leaks and radiations emitted during the nuclear fission reaction this is all for the session let us meet in another session until then bye bye please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and tap the like button if you like the video and drop in your comments thank you